فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين we always praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. May Allah bless them and bless every one of us. This beginning with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sending of blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the blessed household, we as mu'mineen and believers will never tire, we will never become tired of praising Allah and sending these blessings because in actual fact it elevates our own status it is an honor to be able to do this and therefore we should always take our time when it comes to the praise of Allah and the praise of the Prophet ﷺ and these words that are filled with blessings for ourselves to begin with and then definitely for the Prophet ﷺ and his household and they are the highest in rank. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and acceptance. This evening we commence from verse number 56 of Surah Al-An'am and we will see two or three different aspects of the tafsir where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking us back to the time of ignorance just when the Prophet ﷺ faced the people of Mecca with the guidance of Islam. The nur and the light with the truth is very clear. It just requires a sincere heart to notice it, to see it. And it requires the acceptance from Allah to be able to follow it. When we talk of hidayah, it's divided into two aspects. Number one is to be able to see the path and to be able to know what's right and wrong to be guided to a path that's number one number two is the ability to walk on that path so the first one comes with an effort from you and I it comes with an effort that has to be made within the capacity that Allah has given you and I you question you ask you study, you learn, you continue asking. You have the young ones, sometimes they ask questions that are more and more complex as time passes. Don't get upset. They must keep on asking. They will look for answers and the day will come when they will realize what the light is. Then in the hands of Allah is whether you're going to walk on it or not. How many of us, we know what is halal and haram, but still we do the haram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to walk on that or to tread the path that is beautiful and pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at that time, there was a discussion that happened between the Prophet sallallahu and those whom he was calling towards goodness. Let's fast forward to today. We call people towards goodness. Number one, we should make sure that we are a part of that goodness. We call people towards goodness. It should be done in the most respectful way. One of the reasons of our downfall, we become vulgar, we become impatient, we become arrogant in the way we come across. And this is something we all need to work on. Every one of us needs to develop when it comes to how to address those who disagree with you, those who hate you, they dislike you. They don't even want what you are trying to give them. And the most important thing to give them is the guidance of the deen of Allah. The goodness, the development of the relationship with Allah is what we are trying to not only adopt ourselves, but even give to others. So it needs to be done in the most respectful way. Today, when people say a word against the Prophet ﷺ, we feel hurt and rightfully so. But that hurt should not lead us to hooliganism. It should not lead us to become people who prove to those who have been saying that these people are hooligans that they are right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, something worse happened. And that was in person they attacked him. In person they were vulgar. Not, not behind his back. In front of him. 
they did things, they threw things at him, they threw stones at him. Subhanallah. If you look at how he reacted, it would show how far we are when we react. So the reason I start with this introduction is look at the beauty of the discussion between Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught by Allah instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with those whom he totally disagrees with completely those who attacked him the likes of Abu Jahl the like the likes of Al Akhnas ibn Shuraik and the others at a certain time Abu Sufyan as well so Allah says verse number 56 of Surah Al-An'am قُلْ سَيْءُ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنِّي نُهِيتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ Tell them with utmost respect that I have been prohibited from worshipping that which you are calling out to besides Allah. Look at how respectful it is. He didn't go out and start calling them big, big names and swearing them and telling them off because the idea was if we can win these people over, it would obviously be a bonus and a blessing it is something that would result in our own benefit you see if someone were to sell you a property at a price that you know this is a bargain you would be excited you would want the deal and you would talk to them and they would be back and forth and you would be able to perhaps you know smile at the end of the deal and say you know i gained on this one what would it bring back for you perhaps a rental perhaps maybe increase in value after a period of time and you're going to sell it some form of benefit wallahi the hadith says if allah uses you to guide a single person it is better for you than humr in naam which means the most expensive conveyance at the time the red camel <coughs> so the deal that you are supposed to be more excited about is when someone who's astray away filled with hate filled with whatever else has come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of an effort that Allah allowed you to make that is something great so the respect he says to them i have been prohibited from worshiping that which you are calling out to besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qul la attabi'u ahwa'akum tell them i'm not going to follow your desires i'm not going to follow your whims your fancies that which you are in doubt of yourself why should i follow it you see why should i follow something that you yourself are doubting when i am convinced that what i have is the truth but look at how respectful the discussion is he didn't slap them on the face he didn't beat them up he didn't swear them but he was respectful la attabi'u ahwa'akum why wouldn't i follow your ideas Do you know why they come from your own mind they are actually misguided qad dalaltu idhan if i did that if i followed you and what you yourself are doubting i am misguided i would be in that case misguided wama ana min al muhtadin and i wouldn't be from among those who have been rightly guided so look at how beautiful these words are these words are being said to by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam through the instru- or the instruction of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to use these words to explain to the people why we worship differently the same would apply today when we worship differently from someone we don't need to become vulgar we don't need to become filled with hate in the sense that it our speech is filled with hate yes we dislike the deed definitely but as for the person we have hope the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made dua he prayed and supplicated for the enemies of islam to the degree that many of them came across period of time when you make a dua to allah in a few moments we will see what happens so this is the uh, teaching of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what beautiful words are being taught by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he used these words who are we to use vulgar words who are we who claim to be the lovers of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who claim to be those who follow the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but the language we use is cheap even when we don't really have a big disagreement with someone this is massive disagreement but i'm talking about my character and all of us who need a reminder let's refine it let's become better people may allah make it easy for us so allah says qul inni ala bayyinatin mir rabbi the discussion is continuing tell them i have clear cut complete convincing 
evidence from Allah. I'm convinced. Bayina. I have that which is manifest, clear, convincing from my Lord. And I'm upon it. I'm following it. I'm following that which is absolutely correct. I've no doubt. وَكَذَّبْتُمْ بِهِ As for you guys, you have belied it. You have disagreed. You have not followed it. مَا عِنْدِي مَا تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ بِهِ Before I translate that, let me tell you. You see, when people get into a fight, what happens? One man tells the other, hit me, let's see, what you going to do? Hit me. I'm sure we've seen this, we've heard about it. Now, sometimes a person might just look and laugh and walk away. What does he say? Allah will fix you. Have you heard that? It said a lot. May Allah bless every one of us and grant us the softening of the heart. Amen. So, they used to tell the Prophet ﷺ that, you know, you are warning of a punishment to come. If someone were to tell you, watch out, you say, what are you going to do? Watch out, what are you going to do? You know, they say there was a man and he was very soft in nature. So, when he was getting married, the friends of his told him, you know what? Your wife is going to take full charge of everything. She's going to control the affairs from A to Z. You better show a little bit of power, you know. So he says, what do I do? They said, you must threaten her the first day. Now this man was frightened. How am I going to threaten a woman? They said, okay, if you don't want, don't say anything. The first day we'll release a little rat or a cat or whatever it was. Let's say a, cat, a rat. And when you see it in the room as she enters, you must put her aside, let her sit comfortably and watch you beat that rat until you throw it out of the window. You know, so he did that. And when he did that, she was actually frightened. She said, my friends told me this guy is very soft in nature, but look at how, 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 how he can become, you know. So anyway, after that, whenever he used to tell her something, she used to have a sense of fear. And she used to quickly do whatever he says. You know, make me a cup of tea or else. Before he, before he says or else what she says, don't worry, it's done. You know, get up or else, or else, before the or else comes, it's done. So she told her friends that, you know, you told me this man was soft in nature. How come? It's the opposite. They said, no, call his bluff one day. She said, okay. So the following morning he says, make my tea or else. So she says, or else what? Or else I'll make the tea. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> May Allah grant us ease and goodness. May Allah open our doors. Anyway, getting back to the point here. <laughs> people sometimes threaten. Those threats are empty. But when Allah gives a warning, it is real. You never ever say or else to Allah. Never ever. And Allah won't say that to you. Because what happens is, Allah knows when He warns you, the warning is definitely true. When Allah says, if you harm a friend of mine, you are in trouble. Trust me, you are in trouble. There's only one thing. In fact, two things that you need to remember. Number one is, Allah gives you time to see if you're going to mend your ways and make amends. He gives you time, respite. That time prolongs between a few days to a few years and a few decades. When Musa alayhi salam called out against the Pharaoh, it didn't happen day one. He was persecuted for a long, long time. The people were persecuted for a long time. One day he raised his hands and he says, Oh Allah, this man destroy his wealth, destroy everything you've given him, break him, finish him. That, that dua, I, it's shocking to read this dua in the Quran. There must have been some really, really damaging actions of, and deeds of the Pharaoh. And they were. So Allah says, Qad ujibat da'watukuma. Listen, O Musa, alayhi salam, we have heard and responded. But guess what? The punishment came 40 years later, according to the narrations. Why were those 40 years? Same applies to Nuh alayhi salam. He made a dua against his people at a certain point. Not initially. The friends of Allah, they don't make a dua. You know, you, you hurt someone, you did something. They don't, they excuse you. But there comes a point where there's a limit for things. You cannot keep on doing things. I'm sure you've heard of the three men who were considered very pious sitting in the front of the masjid. And the young guys were told, these guys are so pious, they are actually on another level of character. No matter what you do, they will forgive. They are very forgiving. They won't even notice. They are involved in their dhikr. So the young boy decides, you know, I, I, I'm a bit of a big guy. Let me check. He goes to the first man who he was told is the third of the three. 
he says, he, he, he tried to attract him, his attention and he couldn't. This man was busy in his dhikr. So he slapped the man and the man remained and he continued in his dhikr as though nothing happened. Subhanallah, what a pious man. What a pious guy. Right? Because he probably knew or oh, whatever happened, Allah knows. He decided, let me go to the next guy who's supposedly more pious than the other one and he slapped him too. That man got up and he says, brother, how is your hand? Are you sure you didn't get hurt? This guy was shocked. He says, you know what? Look at how pious this man is. I slapped him. He's not worried about how the marks are on his face. He's concerned about my hand and whether it got hurt or not. What piety is this? He decided, let me go to the third guy because he is the most pious. So he slapped the third guy across his face. That man got up and gave him two slaps. He said, but I heard that you are the most pious. He said, look, someone needs to stop you. You don't go around slapping people here. <laughs> Subhanallah. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us in another way. To say, look, there is a limit to things. Even with Allah, there is a limit. Allah gives you a chance. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was, was telling them, look, I'm warning you of a punishment. That was actually the first thing he ever said to them when he called them to Islam. Can I remind you? He gathered Quraysh and he stood on Safa. And he says, Oh Quraysh, if I were to tell you that behind me there is an army coming to attack, would you believe? They said, we've never known you to have uttered a single lie. Why would you be lying? Then he says, I'm warning you of the severe punishment if you don't change your ways and habits. They said, you're a liar. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. And then when he, it irritated them. So they kept telling him, with that punishment? We haven't yet listened to you. Where's the punishment? Now, it's insulting. I mean, if you're supposed to be a friend of Allah and you've warned people, look, I'm warning you of a punishment and the punishment's not coming to them simply because, like I said, number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a chance. He really gives you a chance to make amends, to go back and to, you know, uh, through His mercy. Number two is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you a time, a time, before he knows that punishment is going to come. You either repent and you've come out of it so you won't get the punishment. Or if you haven't, then the time clocks in and you hit. And when you hit, nothing will stop it. At that juncture, it's too late. Too late. So this is why this period of time differs from person to person depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes seven whole years. In fact, 40 years in the time of Musa alayhi salam. This is according to one of the narrations. 40 years. Some others make mention of a slightly shorter space of period of time. But remember when you've done something wrong, it has to come to catch you. There is no way, impossible in the justice system of Allah that it's not going to come back to get you. It has to. So you, are, you, you rather seek the forgiveness of Allah and the people you've wronged. And then you make the peace. When they kept on telling the Prophet ﷺ, you know what he told them? Allah says, Tell them, ma indi ma tasta'jiluna bi. That which you are impatient regarding, I don't have it. Allah has it. That which you are you keep on telling me, where is it? Where's the punishment? And this was not only him. All the prophets of Allah, most of them, the Quran says they were told by their people, where's that punishment? Yeah. You're talking of the punishment. Look, you're becoming poorer and poorer, downtrodden. We are the ones who are haughty. That's what the Fir'aun kept on saying. That's what Qarun kept on saying. But Allah says, hang on. When, you know, when the whip of Allah strikes, doesn't make a sound. It's suddenly there. In the morning, you see everything's gone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Really, it's a lesson for us. So, ma indi ma tasta'jiluna bih. I don't have that which you are impatient regarding. It's Allah's. In الحكم إلا لله That decision is with none other than Allah. Allah will decide how long He wants to give you respite. And imagine, some of the same people who were saying, where's the punishment? They accepted Islam later on. That was a gift of Allah. So through Allah's mercy, He gives you time. There is another reason why Allah gives us time. You see, if you take a look at a war, take a look at a war, two countries are fighting, one has the upper hand, the other has the lower. And the lower keeps getting a bashing and at times they can do nothing about it very little besides call out to Allah Allah calms them down and extinguishes their anger because had they had the opportunity at that time 
to have similar power to the others, they would have perhaps aggressed more than those in retaliation. So Allah says, hang on, we're going to calm you down, calm down. Once your anger is gone, you become patient, you realize your inability, etc. Et then Allah says, now we're going to punish those guys and let you have a good day. We're going to let you see, you know, the victory as well. It will come after a time. So at times it's to calm you down. Allah gives that chance that, you know, when you're angry and you're hot, you can end up bashing someone more than they bashed you. But if, if there is a time frame and a time period, it calms you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So he says, يَقُصُّ الْحَقَّ وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الْفَاصِلِينَ Allah narrates and relates and says the truth. The truth. And he is the best decider. Allah will decide the matter between us. When he wants to punish, he will punish. If he wants to forgive, it's up to him based on whatever is going to happen. You might change you whatever might else might happen positively Allah will accept it or he might punish so that is Allah Kul, tell them Allah is instructing Muhammad وسلم, again to talk to them in a beautiful way with utmost respect telling them where they are going wrong if I had that which you are impatient regarding meaning if I owned the ability to punish you right now. The matter between you and I would have been decided a long time ago. There would have been a clear winner right now, right here. You know, sometimes, sometimes when you make a dua, Allah accepts it immediately, instantly. You see things happening. Sometimes you make a dua, Allah has heard it. He has perhaps accepted it. But when the timing is right, He's going to let it be released. Perhaps if it's a dua against an oppressor, it will be unleashed. Against an oppressor, the hadith says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no barrier between him and that dua. So Muhammad sallallahu says, if I had it, if I owned it, the matter between us would have been resolved, solved. That's not belief in the unseen. Because if someone says, look, you have to believe that you have a maker, you have to believe that there are angels, you have to believe that there are uh, that there is Jannah and Jahannam, heaven and hell. You, and if people say, well, uh, show it to us, and then you show them an angel, and you show them heaven, and you show them hell, and you show them... If that was the case, what's there in saying you have to believe? We saw it, and we, we took it. We saw it. But when you haven't seen it, that's belief. So Allah, He is saying, Muhammad Wasallam is saying, if I had what you wanted, and what you actually asked for, and what you're impatient regarding, the matter would have been resolved and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, the matter between us would have been resolved. And Allah knows best who is the wrongdoer. Wallahu a'lamu bil-zalimin. Now, we move on to other verses where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, makes mention of something known as the keys of the unseen. Why speaking about the unseen? Because the whole debate with the mushrikeen of Mecca was about the unseen. And then they started asking Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so many things. They, 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 the books of Sirah and the Ahadith are filled with where the Mushrikeen of Mecca raised objection upon objection, telling him, "We want you to do this. We want you to do that. We want you to do." Th-. They challenged him with so many things. A lot of these challenges are part and parcel of what is being mentioned in these verses. To say, you know what, we want you to do this for us. If it is, uh, if really what you brought is the truth then we want you to split the moon for us, and so on. A time came when that happened, and then they didn't believe it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ As for the unseen, Allah has the keys of the unseen. لا يعلمها إِلَّهُ Certain things, He alone has kept the knowledge of. Alone. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ He knows that which is on earth, meaning at land and at sea. Allah knows it all. He knows absolutely everything. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا Not a leaf anywhere across the globe from any one of the trees from east to west and north to south. Not a leaf falls down except that Allah knows about it. He knows it. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا Not that a leaf is too big. Allah says, وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ not even a grain 
a little seed in the darkness of the earth, except Allah knows. Now the question we need to ask ourselves, if Allah knows those small items, do you really think He's forgotten you and I? And I always say, if Allah has taken it upon Himself to provide for the ant, I'm bigger than an ant, subhanallah. He knows me and He knows you, and He will give you and provide for you. You have to develop your relationship with Allah, there's no other way. And if you develop your relationship with Allah, He'll give you contentment. Allah has apportioned for everyone a certain amount. He'll give you that amount, not a drop more, not less. But the blessing in it will be determined by your relationship with Him. So then he continues. Look how he started off with the example of the leaf. Then he went smaller than a leaf by saying the little seed or the grain. And he went smaller than that by saying wala ratbin, wala ya, wala ratbin. Not even the moisture. What is moisture? Moisture, the moisture Allah knows. The moisture in the soil and wherever else and the humidity Allah knows it. So that's smaller than, that is smaller than this grain we're talking about. And then Allah takes it one, one higher, which make, it makes it even smaller. Wala ya bisin. Not even the dryness of it, the absence of the humidity, we record it. The absence of it. Of what? Of the humidity. Wala ratbin wala ya bis. Illa fi kitabim mubin. Except that it is in a clear book. Clear meaning, there's no doubt in it. You know, when you check something scientifically and you look at it and you, you can see, sometimes you can't see, you know, people who do ultrasound, they check, they can't check. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Allah says, no way. Kitabin mubin. It's written in a clear cut fashion. This is what it is here. Done. Subhanallah. So Allah is showing you His power. That's the might of Allah. Then the last verse we will talk about is the sleep that Allah blesses us with and the fact that He knows what you're doing at all times. So Rasulullah these verses were revealed to him. It is Allah who causes your soul to leave the body when you fall off to sleep at night. In what way? Allah knows. It is called the minor death. Sleep is a minor death. Mawta sughra. How is the soul connected to the body when we are sleeping? Allah knows best. When a person dies, Allah holds the soul back if he died in his sleep. And if life is written for him, Allah puts the soul back into his body in the, mo in the complete way such that he wakes up from his sleep. That's why when you wake people up from their sleep, do it, so, do it in a calm way. Don't just scream and yell. You get them worried. They can, you know, they can suffer a heart attack perhaps, depending on how bad it was. So, Allah is telling us, وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ He is the one who takes you في الليل, at night. He takes the soul in a way that He knows best. At night, Right? So someone might say, what about the daytime? Well, if a person sleeps at daytime, it would be the same. But why Allah is mentioning night here alone is very interesting. Because the most beneficial sleep that a person can have is that in the early hours of the night. So Allah is encouraging us and telling us to sleep at night. And the encouragement is there even in the other ahadith and even in other verses of the Quran. So then he says, He knows what you've earned during the day. He knows what you've done during the day. He knows your deeds, your actions, good deeds, bad deeds, whatever it is. The bad deeds. Allah knows them during the day. Then Allah sends you in it. Allah, like we said earlier, if Allah wants, He returns you back to that life to spend another day. That's why when we say the supplication in the morning when we get up, we say, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah, Alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana. Amazing. We thank Allah, we are praising Allah who gave us life after He caused our death. That's the dua. We say it, we should be saying it every morning. Because a day will come, if Allah has written your death in sleep, you're not going to get up again. So this is part of the dua. Then Allah says, لِيُقْضَى أَجَلٌ مُسَمَّنْ in order to spend a specific time that we have fixed and to complete that, that time, the appointed time, we send you back to the earth. You get back to sleep, we send you back to the earth. Get back to sleep, send you back to the earth. When the appointed, come times, uh, when the appointed time comes, you're gone. 
thumma ilayhi marji'ukum then shall be to him your ultimate return thumma yunabbi'ukum bima kuntum ta'malun this is the most interesting part of the verses we read this evening he says then he will tell you what you used to do amazing shows how weak is man if i ask you what did you do when you were 10 years old you won't be able to remember much besides two or three highlights briefly vaguely at times your earliest memory is one two things you can think of more than that you can't even remember what happened yesterday fully you can't even remember what happened earlier today completely so allah says we're going to have to tell that to you we're going to have to show it to you it's us it goes to show how weak man is as sophisticated as you and i think we are we are nothing compared to what allah has the record of us you know people used to wonder at a time that how is allah going to you know show us this a few years ago a few years ago how is allah going to have a record of what you've said what you've done you know files how will they be written and what not and so on today technological advancement has already put into perspective certain things but the example of allah is higher far higher than that what are these things imagine cctv what is it all about go and study it you can have a little camera the size of a dot the size of a dot that would record everything your sound and high quality video of your movements your actions whatever it is subhanallah and people can watch it they can keep it they can store it they can come back and catch a thief they can do this and whatever they want subhanallah rabbil alamin the same applies to the voice notes and so on your voice can be recorded so if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the creator has allowed us just a small drop of knowledge and with that we've gotten so advanced imagine what allah has may allah make it easy for all of us really so from this evening's lesson we learned number 1 what challenges the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam faced some of them how he addressed them how he was instructed to address them how we we disagree with those who don't believe what we believe but we always address the matter respectfully similarly we learned the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has the keys of the unseen i didn't go into the five aspects of the unseen because that's not our topic but at the same time we learned that we are ultimately all going to return to allah and he knows everything about us there is no way that we will be able to get away from what we've done however my beloved brothers one thing that's very very important is the issue of tauba seeking the forgiveness of allah that is actually the gift of mankind adam alayhi salam was not sent to earth until he was taught how to seek forgiveness from allah then he was told now you can go so that's the gift mankind should continue seeking forgiveness of allah and when you seek the forgiveness of allah shaitan will come and try to trap you from another point by making you think hey my sin was too big hey perhaps i haven't been forgiven i don't know what's going to happen no when you lose that hope in the mercy of allah you've actually weakened your faith in allah when he says do not lose hope in my mercy we should hang on to that verse and we should we be very hopeful in the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what we've done there's always the time for us to make amends before the punishment overtakes any one of us may allah not let that happen aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk